Hey, this is Shane Long, wedding and portrait photographer based in Minnesota and Southwest Florida. And over the next few days, I'm gonna be trying out the Sigma 28 millimeter F1.4 to see if this is a lens I wanna to add to my bag. All right, here we go. The first question I want to answer in this video is why, why this lens? So for me, I'm a wedding and portrait photographer. I shoot in Minnesota and Florida, and I like to shoot prime lenses. I really like the 3D pop kind of look that they have on them. The 50 millimeter 1.2 is the lens that I use the most on a wedding day. And my secondary lens is typically a 35 millimeter. Now when Canon came out with the R series, I got their RF 35 millimeter 1.8 Eight, and I sold my EF 35mm 1.4. I'm kind of regretting that now because Canon still doesn't have out uh, an RF 35mm um, L lens, which I hope they do soon. So in the meantime, I'm looking for a lens with a little bit more pop. I came across this Sigma lens that's a 28mm 1.4. I wanted to give it a shot to see if, number one, it would be slightly wider than my 35 because sometimes when I'm shooting 35 and 50, I feel like the 35 isn't that much different than my 50, so I'd like a slightly wider field of view and to see if it would just have a little bit more pop to it. And I watched a lot of YouTube videos on this lens. Um, I read about the lens, but I really just like to put a lens to the test and try it out to see if I like it or not. So I'm gonna try it out here at a few weddings. We're gonna see how it goes, and then we'll look at the images here just to see what I think. All right, here is the 2814. I'm using it here in this setting because it's just wide enough to get uh, the building and a little bit of this blur with these trees. So I was just about to take some detailed shots of the bridal suite here. Uh, I had the 35 on and that just wasn't quite wide enough. So I need to either get my 15 to 35 or go try the 28 millimeter here. All right, now we're gonna try the same photo with the 28.14. See how this photographs you. And I'm turning off these light switches because the color was too yellow there. So we'll try it again here. I just finished shooting four weddings with this lens and I kind of want to talk about my experience. Overall, this lens is fantastic. Sharp, beautiful images, nice pop, slightly wider than the 35 millimeter. In this photo, I was just taking a context shot of the venue as I was coming in. Uh, the color is wonderful. It's sharp all the way to the edge, shot at 1.4. And yet this tree in the foreground blurs out kind of nice and keeps the focus right where I wanted it. There were lots of different moments that I liked using this lens. One of the moments is, uh, you know, the context of hanging the dress at the beginning of the day or the bride and the bridesmaids as they're hanging out in the room at the day beginning. This lens is great for capturing kind of those um, candid context kind of moments. It did pair really well with my 50 millimeter, so I could kind of get this photo of the bride and the bridesmaids as they're seeing the bride in her dress and then i can quick flip to my 50 millimeter and get a closer up of their reactions even as the bride's getting dressed i actually did like using the stretch of a 28 millimeter perspective because it did pull out her dress and let me see the dress fuller where uh, you know the back of the dress there versus if i'm shooting an 85 millimeter it's pretty compressed and you can't kind of see the bottom um, of the train there the 28 perspective allowed me in a very small room, so this was a very small room to still be able to see the bride in her full dress, just using that natural light there to kind of capture that context. And continuing on that context kind of note, I can be not very far away from the couple and still capture where the couple is without a distorted look to it. And yet, if you kind of zoom in here, you can tell the background still fades away. It has a unique pop to it versus being just a flat kind of standard photo. I found myself reaching for this lens quite often the more I used it. So I was using it 
again, for couple photos, uh, wedding party photos, uh, context kind of where we are out in the woods kind of photos. And even as I was taking some of the, um, the decor kind of photos, um, I was reaching for it there too. So here's a shot of it. I took one photo here with the 28 millimeter on this side, and here it is now compared to the 50 millimeter, just so you can see the different perspectives. So the 28 millimeter is gonna stretch out. You're gonna see more of that background. The legs are gonna look elongated, whereas the 50 millimeter is gonna compress it, have a more standard, more like what your eye would see kind of perspective to the day. When we zoom in and we look at kind of the detail, the sharpness compared to the very good RF 50 millimeter, it's hard to tell much of a difference here. So you've got the RF 50 millimeter 1.2 shot at 1.2 on this side, and it's a little bit sharper, a little bit more clear, but uh, you would really have to pixel peep to notice any different. One situation I really found myself really liking this lens is the uh, the processionals and the recessionals. So when the wedding party is walking down the aisle, it allows me to capture them, still blur out the background. I can shoot this at 1.4 while still being able to see their their guests and um, where we are. So I, I would pair this, I was pairing it with either my 50 millimeter for the farther away shot or my 85 millimeter. And then the closer they got to me, I had time to quick flip and use the 28 millimeter uh, to get the context of the bride walking down the aisle here. This worked out really well in some of these darker situations where there isn't as much available light. I didn't really want to flash. I like leaving that moment um, and it captures it in a beautiful, beautiful way. Even one recessional here, the bride and groom were walking back down the aisle. The groom uh, didn't know it was coming. He bent over, dipped her, gave her a kiss right in the middle of the moment. And I was right there with that 28 millimeter to capture the moment with still being able to see a, a lot of the guest reaction while keeping the focus on the couple. One other situation that I was using this lens is was the detail photos. So here we are in the reception hall. I can put my focus right here on a table. The rest of the venue kind of blurs out beautifully while keeping, uh, keeping the attention right on that, uh, that table right there. This room was pretty dimly lit, and so to be able to use the 28 millimeter to keep the focus on the head table was beautiful, and a lot of the floral arrangement. It just allowed me to capture it in a different perspective than if I was using my 15 to 35 at f2.8. Here's a photo I took of the father-daughter dance. This kind of shows off exactly what you can do with the 28-1.4. Uh, so the father and his daughter, they are razor sharp, perfectly in focus. The context is still there, but the attention isn't pulled away uh, by the people in the background there. And finally, I tried it out. We slipped out for some golden hour photos at the end of the night, and I did use that in a situation here where we have the bride and groom walking away from the venue. I'm able to capture the venue, um, but keep the focus on them. We went down to the water side there and uh, shared a little dance <laughs> before their first dance. So. Um, keeps the water in the photo, but keeps the attention on them. Sigma has done a phenomenal job with the build quality of this lens. It's a metal lens, and even when adapted to the camera, feels extremely sturdy and made from quality materials. That said, it does add weight, especially when you adapt it. And for me, when I'm carrying my camera bag around on a wedding day, I can only have so many lenses in there before the, the weight total adds up. So right now I'm just trying to weigh between, do I keep the 28 one four or the little 35 one eight that weighs a lot less than this lens. One note is this lens does have to be adapted to the camera. My personal favorite adapter is the uh, Canon control ring mount adapter because I love having the extra control ring um, on the lens. I have mine set to the Calvin temp so I can change the color of my photo while I'm shooting. I know there's others out there that think this is a bad idea that you'd somehow bump this dial. You're not gonna bump this dial any more than you are any other dials on your camera. Just so I could for myself see, is there much of a difference between a 28 millimeter at f1.4 to 2.8, I put on the Sigma 28 millimeter and shot it at f1.4 here. And here I have my 15 to 35 shot at 2.8 on this side. So we're gonna zoom in. Here's a one to one ratio, just so you can kind of see that background kind of fading away a lot more on the Sigma than it is on the Canon at 2.8. Sharpness wise, if we come in here to 
Uh, the Canon is a little bit sharper at, um, they're both at their widest apertures, but again, you have to come in at 300% to even notice that. This Sigma is plenty, plenty sharp here at 1.4. Now we have the 28 millimeter on this side and we have the 35 millimeter 1.8, the RF version on this side, just so you can kind of see the difference in perspective. So the 35 is zoomed in more. I lose my feet here. If you look at the edge of the frame, here's the edge of the bush and the edge of the bush here. So you're losing about this much of the photo. You'll also notice that because of compression, the background is larger. So if you look at the distance here, how much trees we have on this side, compared to on this side. Um, every, the background just becomes closer to the subject when you use a longer lens, and that's what you're seeing here. So to get that same perspective, you have to back up a little bit. And so here I backed up with the 35 to get it a similar size. I didn't do a perfect job here, but you can kind of see a similar comparison here. That 28 1.4 has beautiful contrast pop. It's a little bit warmer lens than the Canon uh, renders but it still has really great color. And when we zoom in here, uh, the 35 is also a really pretty sharp lens. They're very similar. You'll also notice that there was a, a deer that was starting to sneak into our shoot right here. And he made a little appearance as he kind of ran through there. To compare the, the background blur, I took two uh, more up close photos of myself here. Not super interesting photos, but just wanted to compare the background blur and also compare the different perspectives. So if you shoot kind of a mid portrait here, just look, look what happens here. So this is a 35 millimeter at 1.8. Now I'm going to flip it. This is the 28 millimeter at 1.4. And what you'll notice that happens, and this is important for photographers to notice, is that my shoulders become smaller as my head becomes larger as I get closer to the camera because a wider lens, a wider lens is gonna shrink that background more to pull it in, um, which makes my head protrude more. So kind of think about that as you're taking portraits here. This is again 35, and when I flip to the 28, it looks a little bit more like that personally do prefer myself um, in the 35 millimeter shot because I like the way it looks my shoulder makes my shoulders look a little broader and doesn't bring my head kind of looking ginormous and even more so if I was actually shooting a portrait here of myself I would be using a 50 or an 85 for this because again that would give a more natural perspective so let's compare the background blur now here we have the 35 on this side and the 28 on this side if we look at the background blur the, the 28 does have slightly larger um, bokeh circles there and they are more smooth the farther we get into the corner so when we get in with the 35 uh, 1.8 here it gets a little messy here with these grass blades the 28 stays more smooth. You'll also notice it on this side here, the, the 35 gets a little messy into the corner, the 28 millimeter stays more smooth. And if we look here, kind of at this tree area, you'll see the same thing, buttery smooth with this Sigma. The center of the frame though, not a lot to notice here, uh, looks pretty similar in its feel here. So I don't know that any client is gonna notice a difference uh, in the background blur between these two photos. All right, my final thoughts. I really enjoyed this lens. I think the 28 focal length was a wonderful focal length. I think it paired wonderfully with my 50 millimeter lens that I use a lot on a wedding day. That said, I didn't find it significantly different than my 35 millimeter 1.8 in terms of sharpness, in terms of background blur. They were within the same ballpark. If you're looking at buying these, just note that you will have to adapt the 28 millimeter, which makes it a lot larger and heavier than this beautiful little lightweight 35 millimeter lens. So keep that in mind. The 28 is a little bit sharper, has a little bit better background blur, but this 35 does a great job and has macro um, as kind of a bonus on it. This Sigma lens though is a very high quality lens and I hope Sigma soon releases some RF mount lenses because the 28 millimeter would be wonderful to have in my kit in a native mount where I don't have to adapt it, kind of like they've been doing for the Sony mount. If you're interested in this lens, uh, the cheapest place I've found it lately has been Adorama. 
Uh, they've got a really good sale. It's been going on for a while, and that's actually why I picked it up because originally it was $1,300, $1,400 for this lens and is marked all the way down now to $539, I think is the cheapest I've seen it. So if 28 millimeters is your thing, it doesn't get any better than this. This lens is phenomenal, sharp, beautiful background blur. The only cons kind of are its size, um, but other than that, this lens is phenomenal. Thanks so much for watching. If this video was helpful for you, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to our channel. We have a lot more fun stuff coming for you. We'll see you next time.